thank you for coming today and uh, welcome to our first webinar of 2015. My name is Dave Wilkinson. It is great to be here with you this afternoon. And we're going to be, this afternoon, we're going to be doing one of my favorite things, which is basically just playing with the Braille Sense and making it do different things that sometimes people overlook in the grand scheme of things. So we were just trying to find some sort of tips and tricks that people miss sometimes so that we can try to make your lives a bit easier. Let me pull up the PowerPoint on my end and I guess we'll get started. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about pairing with phones, but we're, we'll mainly, we've got a document that outlines that pretty, uh, in, in pretty excruciating detail. So you can always send a message to webinars at hymns inkcom and we will be happy to send you instructions on how to pair your iPhone, Android device, Mac, PC, whatever, uh, with any of our devices. Uh, we are going to talk about the terminal clipboard, uh, which is a really neat way of entering text into your iDevice without some of the weird translation issues that you can run into when you're dealing with iOS devices. We're going to be talking about the built-in GPS receiver that a lot of people forget is in the Braille Sense, and we're going to play with the compass. We're going to look at some file navigation and file search shortcuts. We're going to play with the Excel viewer a little bit. And we're going to experiment with recording in DAISY, or at least show you how to get there. We will talk about macros a little bit, and I will be happy to send you some in-depth documentation on macros. I personally love macros. They let me consolidate keystrokes from a whole bunch into just one or two. We'll talk about social media for a little bit, because we can't avoid it. Uh, that's what our students are doing. They're all out there on Facebook and Twitter and playing with YouTube, so we may as well join right in. Then we'll also show you how, if you want, you can lock out the aforementioned uh, social media applications on the Braille Sense. And we'll give you, a, uh, if you send us an email, and uh, as long as we're sure that you're not a student, we'll send you a top secret document on how you can password protect it so that your students can't just go and unlock all the social applications and other things you just locked them out of. So you've got some limited parental controls that you can use. And with that, we will get underway. And we will talk about terminal clipboard. Just as a quick reminder, for pairing your iDevice with your Braille Sense, you do not set up a Bluetooth connection ahead of time on the devices. Uh, what you want to do is turn the terminal for screen reader on on your Braille Sense by going to the File Manager, Utilities, and then Terminal for Screen Reader. Choose Bluetooth Serial Port and press Enter. And then on your iDevice, you're going to go to Settings then General, Accessibility, VoiceOver, and under VoiceOver you would choose Braille, and your Braille device should show up. And then you're, you'll put the pen in if a pen is needed, and if there's not a pen that's needed, you won't have to worry about it. And that's basically all you're going to have to do. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to pair my Braille Sense with my phone. Final Manager, Calculator. Terminal mode. And now we're going to unlock my phone. And now I'm looking at my phone, and if I turn my phone up, you'll hear the voice over voice that we've all come to know and love. Messages for heading. So here we go. Uh, and now all I need to do for this to work is I'm going to go into a message. Uh, we're going to write a text message to Michelle. Speech on. And now, so that voiceover is chatty. Uh, it, now, all I have to do in order to use the terminal clipboard function is hit space, enter, and I, and you will hear the Braille sense say, terminal clipboard. and it says terminal clipboard. We're going to make sure our volume is all the way up. And now we're going to write a message to Michelle, and now I'm just writing in ordinary text using all of my traditional word processing commands on the Braille sense. So we'll type hello. Messages. Hello. Message. Text field. Is editing. Character mode. Michelle Potter. Message. Potter. And we'll type hello, Michelle, and we'll put a new line. Webinar. This yes. webinar Webinar. is yes. going, going well. Well. Hopefully with a question mark. Hopefully. And now to send it, 
all I have to do, and I haven't had to worry about any contractions. I can just use my backspace. I can do it at the top of the file. Start. I can go to the end of the file. Add. I can edit this any way that I want, and then I just press Enter and S. Start setting. And the phone will do some babbling. Space. Hello. And you, you heard the phone as it got the text from the Braille sense, and now we'll just go to send. Send. Okay. And I did send. that, that from and I did that from my Braille sense, and we'll send it. And that's essentially all there is to terminal clipboard. What's really nice about this is you can use terminal clipboard for multiple lines of text. There's no real limitation on the amount of text that you can send this way. You can copy data from a file so that you can send a part of a file to someone through a text or you could send it to their computer or however you wanted to do it. It, it just eliminates a lot of, you, you don't have to learn all of the sort of Apple or Android uh, mobile commands if you don't want to for editing. You don't have to remember that, for example, space D is delete. You can just use your backspace. So you're using commands that you use every day. So we're, we're big fans of the terminal clipboard. I, I rather like it. And now we're going to move on to our GPS. Uh, any of you who know me very well know that I am a GPS fiend. Um, I have multiple GPS programs on multiple platforms. Usually I have more than one running at any given time, uh, which sometimes makes life interesting because I'm getting different information. But the BrailleSense has a built-in GPS receiver. You can also use external GPS receivers if you want. But we have a built-in GPS receiver, and we also give you access to Google Maps. So all I need to do to load my GPS program on the BrailleSense, which comes on board, is to press F1 to go to the File Manager. File Manager. And now from the File Manager, I could either scroll down through the different options using my scroll buttons. Word processor. Email. Media. Organizer. Web tools. Social networking. Extras. And I would go to Extras. Now, those of you who are advanced BrailleSense users know that we could also have just pressed X for Extra. And I'm going to press Enter. Sense Dictionary. And now it takes me to the Extras menu, and I'm looking for Google Maps. And uh, Logic says that I can probably just use a G to get there. I could also just scroll down through them one item at a time. Share, download. Google Maps. And we come to Google Maps, and we'll press Enter. And let's see if it knows where we are. Destination information, 1835 at user point, book at. Let's see if it'll tell me where I am. Position information, Louisville, Jefferson County, Kentucky. From here, I can do a number of things. I can go into my GPS menu by just pressing function key 2. Search pull down. And under the search menu, I can do things like. Search for address, common dialog, space F. I can look for an address. Advanced point search, common dialog, enter F. I could look for POIs, which is uh, the Braille sense is pronouncing POI. So that I could look for points of interest that are in the area. Near voice comment dialog F. And we'll look for near POIs. Let's see what's around me. And again, I'm just using the Braille sense for this. I don't have to have any other software bought from anywhere. So we're going to press enter. Near voice comment dialog. Category all 143. And I have a lot of different categories, just like you would have on your iDevices or with the Sidero product. Uh, so I can go through all these different categories. Contractor 243. Public 343. Finance 443, Florist 543. Florist, I might need a florist. Valentine's Day is coming up in, what, just over a month, so I've got to remember to keep the florist nearby. Painter 643. Painter, probably need one of those too. Movie rental 743. Movie rentals, this just keeps going. We're going to go back up to all. All 143. And we're going to press enter. And it's going to find points of interest that are within about a quarter of a third or a mile, a, third, a quarter to a third of a mile from me. As it's Asahi looking, restaurant, ah, and it comes up with Asahi Restaurant, which is a really good Japanese place that's near here. Big O Tires 220. Big O Tires, they're right up on the corner. Chino with Animal Hospital 420. Chino with Animal Hospital, that's where we take my wife's guide dog uh, in order to have her toenails trimmed and all that kind of good stuff to make sure that she's a pretty looking dog. Cole's Artisan Pizza 520. Cole's Artisan Pizza, that may need to be dinner later on. And if I wanted to create a route to any of these, all I would have to do is press enter. Name, Cole's Artisan Pizza. Set a start position. Set a destination. But if I wanted to create a route to it, I'd just go over to root. Cole's Artisan Name, Cole's Set a start, set a destination. Back searching for location. Create route, common dialog. Walking one, two. 
And now I hit enter on walking. And there we go. Start. Willieville, Kentucky, 40207, USA. Step by step instructions. Head northwest, one minute, one four. So now it's just telling me which directions to head. And this brings me to my next topic. It says head northwest. I may not know which direction northwest is. So I have a compass that I can get access to by pressing dots five, six, and enter. Compass 333 northwest. So there we go. I'm actually not doing too bad. So these are just a few of the things that you can do with your, your GPS. You can plan routes. You can save routes. You can create routes. You've got Google Maps, which means that your points of interest are constantly being updated. Uh, the only catch to using the GPS program on the Braille Sense is that you do have to have access to a Wi-Fi hotspot, which is a Google limitation. So you either want to have a Wi-Fi hotspot or on your phone or something like a MiFi or a Jetpack, uh, or you want to plan out ahead of time and keep your route and store it as a file and just use it for uh, information as you're going along. Now, a big thing that people are always asking me, this, this I run into a lot of this in, in schools with students for some reason. Uh, I'd be like, I have all this stuff on my Braille sense, but I've forgotten what folder I put it in. I have no idea where anything is anymore. How can I find my files? And uh, I say, oh, student, this is easy. All we have to do is go to the file manager, and to get there, we're going to press function key one, which works just like your start menu key on your computer, your left windows key, or it's kind of like using your voiceover D, your VOD command to go to the dock on your Mac. So we're going to go to our file manager. File manager. And from file manager, I'm going to press enter. Flash disk. And in this case, I will choose the flash disk. I would not have to. I could choose any drive that I wanted. And I'm going to press enter. And it shows me my first folder, but I haven't chosen a folder. And all I have to do at this point to find a specific file is press space with dots 124, which is the, the find command. File to find. And uh, since it ties into what I want to show you next, Next, we'll look for any file on here that has an XLS extension. So we'll just type XLS and we'll press enter. Let's see if we can find something. I've got all kinds of stuff on here. Here's a comparison of our Braille displays with other manufacturers. Go figure, right? So if I want to just, if I want to view that file, all I have to do for our Excel viewer at this point is just to press enter. Comparison Braille display dot XLSX 108.5 KB 0417-2012-2050. And it's going to load the file. Okay. Um, all I would all I would have to do to be able to Point do this off. anytime or from anywhere is just go to my file manager and within the file manager point to the specific file that I wanted to open and because it's a uh, an Excel file it's going to automatically open using our Excel viewer. And here I can automatically, I can just move. So from here I can just use my dot four in the space bar to move from one column to the next. A two C two merge cell. A three C three company merge cell. A four C four dimensions. W A five C five wing merge cell. And you'll notice that it's saying A five to C five, and that's because the, um, you've got A to C is merged uh, for, from your top. So you've got the three columns down merged, the three rows merged, and you're moving across column by column. A6, C6, and so like here's a column on Bluetooth and then I could scale down using my scroll buttons and I could see which Braille displays and of course at this point virtually all of them do would have Bluetooth and I could start comparing and contrasting one Braille display with another. I have an extensive array of commands that I can use here. I can press H in the space bar and I will get more help than I will ever possibly want. File help. I can go to file help. Edit help. Edit help. Go to help. And go to help. We can press enter here and we can find out how to go to any particular column or row within the Excel worksheet. And it just keeps going. So we've got an awful lot of things that you can do from within the Excel worksheet. Now you cannot edit it at this point, um, but you can look at this Excel worksheet and you can get an awful lot done. It, 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 I, I find this to be well, I use this for all kinds of things, as you can tell by the sheer number of Excel files that are on here. Um, but it's, it's just a very convenient, nice way of being able to look at Excel spreadsheets. We do have a database manager. You can create databases on 
the Braille sense, and it's something that we didn't actually cover in this uh, webinar. We, that may be something we do in the future. You can make what are called CSV or comma-separated comma values files in our database, which are also openable in Excel on other devices, or for that matter, any spreadsheet program on other devices. And this brings us down to something that we, uh, we added in our last update. We're going to go ahead and close out of our Excel oh, viewer. Um, the Braille Sense will allow you to, to not only listen to DAISY material or read DAISY material, but you can also record in DAISY. And the reason that you may want to do that is that if, if you're recording a lecture in class, you may be recording a lecture and taking notes at the same time so that you can listen to it and read about it later on. And the good thing about the Braille Sense is that our keyboard is quiet enough that you're able to write while you're recording, and although you'll hear the key presses, it's not going to drown out the poor soul who's talking in the front of the room. If you come to a section of that class lecture where the teacher says, this is going to be on the test, or this is what your homework is going to be about, and you want to be able to put a, a mark in there and jump specifically to that segment, well, recording in DAISY will let you do that. Or if you're preparing a text for a student, if you're reading something and you want to prepare it in DAISY, you can enter things like page breaks, phrases, headings, without having to get specialized software to do it. So in order to do this, we're going to go back to the file manager. I always like to start with the file manager because it gives me a starting point. File manager. And now I'm going to go down to the media player. Word processor email. Media. I'm going to press enter on media. Media player. And we're going to press enter on media player. And now we are going to go into our menu and BrailleSense users know that the, the Alt key, which is how you get into your menu, is going to be Function Key 2. File pulls out. Now we're going to move down to Settings. Play pulls out. Record comment dialog enter R. Position pulls out. Mark pulls out. Settings pulls out. And we're going to press Enter on Settings. I could have also just typed S to get there. Configuration comment dialog backspace C. Settings, com, record settings, com, dialog, backspace, S. Record settings, and I press enter. Record settings, dialog box. Recorded type, MP3. Log, MP3. Sample rate, 40 for recording method. Log. And now I tab over. I'm either recording an MP3 or wave, and I tab twice, and I come to either Daisy recording, Daisy recording, normal recording, or I can hit the space bar and go to normal recording. Normal, I guess, in this case, meaning not DAISY recording. And that is basically all there is to it. If I wanted to save my DAISY recording, Daisy recording. now I just press Enter, Title, track one, track zero. and it saved it. And the next time I record, and remember, you've got the convenient buttons on the front of your Braille Sense, for, and one of which is the Record button. So all you would have to do is hit the Record button, and off you would go. And that's all there, there is to it. However... If you wanted to build your own macro for this, you could. And all you would have to do, and again, I will send you instructions on macros. The easiest way to do your macros, um, the shortcut for it is function key 2 plus R. And it will start to record a macro. Start macro mode. Title track 1, record zero, 01. And now all it's doing is it's recording every keystroke that I perform so that if I go to the start menu, I scroll to the media center, media player, into the media player settings, down to record settings, tab over, change my settings from normal to daisy or daisy to normal. It's just recording all of those keystrokes. And then when I hit function key two and R again, and back on both. And it just wants a name for the macro, and I could type in Daisy and press Enter. Save completed. And now I have a macro that's called Daisy. And if I want to execute that macro or make that macro work, I just hit Function Key Two and L. Macro file Daisy thirteen thirteen. And I, and you'll you'll see that I've got thirteen different macros on here. The last of which is Daisy. I would press Enter, and it would do all of those steps that I just talked about for you. On, on its own and you wouldn't have to do it. So I'm a huge macro person. It shows my age to some extent, but I'm a huge macro person because I go all the way back to the Braille and speak in Braille light days.
just a few more things that we want to show you on here. We have all kinds of social media stuff on here. Uh, we have an app for Twitter. We have an app for Facebook. We've got Google Chat. We've got Google Talk. Uh, we've got YouTube on here. Uh, and just to give you a quick, uh, this is always scary because who knows what people have posted on Facebook or whatever these days. But we're going to just go to File Manager. Everything starts with File Manager, which is Function Key 1. File Manager. And then from File Manager, I could scroll through my individual, my, my applications, or I could just hit C for Social, which is what I'm going to do. Twitter. And the first one we come to is Twitter. And on Twitter, I have... For Twitter and Facebook, I have my login information saved. So if I just press enter here, it will automatically sign me in. I hope I still have my information saved on Twitter. There we go. And now I can see who all has been tweeting throughout the day. So I've got here's a, a, a tweet from uh, CNET. That news, our AFB by T21, our team has still literacy. Is Grail still relevant in the high tech world? Watch this video to find out what people who are blind have to say at 3032. Absolutely, Braille is still relevant. Here's a tweet from the American Foundation for the Blind. I can guarantee you that they're coming out uh, pro Braille on that. So I could send a tweet from here. I could look at my timeline. Um, I can look at a link if someone puts a link into a tweet. So I've got most of the features available in Twitter that I would want to be using. Uh, and again, you could do this on another device, but it's just easier here. Uh, it's, it's a very simple interface. Now, if I want to close Twitter, Task A, media player. Title and we're going to go Twitter. all the way back out. And now we'll go. Talk. Sense chat, Facebook. And again, I got to Facebook just by going to function key one. Then I hit C for social media, or social apps, or whatever we call Sense it. Chat. Social networking. social networking is what we call it. I have no idea. And then I'm going to go down to Facebook, and I'm going to press enter, and it will automatically log me in. And after it logs me in, we'll find out all the different folks that what folks have been up to on Facebook these days. So now I'm I'm signed in, and now we can uh, scroll through some of these. Christopher McMillan, Disney Hudson of the Take of Walt Disney World updates for 2015. HT Christopher McMillan, another take for Linux app with Joey Palillo, HTTPS. And so I've got all kinds of posts here from folks that have been writing throughout the day, probably instead of working. And from here, I could, I could write on someone's timeline. I could write on someone's wall. I pretty much can do anything in Facebook except for live chat. And I can't send a private message from here. I would need to have their Facebook email address to send a private message. Uh, this is our first go round with Facebook. We are working on trying to get more features added to our app. But again, it's just, a, you know, and if you wanted, you could obviously use your phone for something like this. But we just find it to be a really easy way to be able to access a lot of the more popular features of Facebook. Now we're going to exit out of Facebook. And we'll go back to File, file Manager. Manager. Task A, File Manager. We have a really cool feature for YouTube, and uh, people are always wanting to know, why would you have YouTube? Well, just because we can't see the video, we may want the audio. So again, we're going to go to the File Manager. It's where we always start, right? File Manager. And from File Manager, I could scroll to the Media Center, or I could just press M. We will scroll. Word processor, email, media. And we'll press Enter. Media player. And from here, I'm inside of the media center, and I'm at the media player. I could scroll through until I get to YouTube. FM radio, Daisy player, YouTube. And we'll press enter on YouTube. Top menu, search one eight. And the first thing I come to is search, which is what I want to do. So I'm going to press enter. Search. And we'll search. This will be blatant advertising. We'll type in Blaze. Blaze. Easy. And we'll press enter. Search. Search results. 2014 technology. Versus W the satellites conference. Blaze as 150. Blaze as a boxing 250. Blaze as I need to correct uh, EZ in my user dictionary so that it says EZ. Loading. And we'll go ahead in just a moment. We will hear the sound of a Blaze EZ turning on, which is a digital book reader. And then you will hear Jenny Axler, who works in our international office, start to talk to you about the Blaze Title. EZ. Blaze as a and this is now YouTube. a little bit of 
of setup. And that's enough of that to prove that it works. We got to hear Jenny, and we got to learn that the Blaze EZ exists, and you got to see that YouTube is here, and that that downloaded it. It was a several minute video, and it downloaded it pretty quickly. Now we come to the really cool part, being able to customize your Braille Sense. And you may want to do this for a number of reasons. You may want to customize your Braille Sense just because you don't, if there are things that you use, like I, I never use the games on the Braille Sense. I'm not a games person, so maybe I just don't want games to ever pop up so I can have games go away. Um, so it's, it's really just a matter, it, it's not necessarily all about just locking things out or parental controls, but you may, if you don't use things, you may just not want them to be around, the same reason that people customize their start menus. So in order to customize your Braille Sense menus as far as what programs are shown and not shown, the easiest way to get to it is to hit function key 3 and the letter M. Oops. Except that I didn't go back. Task A, menu manager. And now or the menu manager, you, there are 75 different th things here that you can turn either on or off. And all you have to do is hit the space bar to toggle between the two. Off. Now we're going to turn the word processor back on because I definitely want it on. Off. Email on 275. Media 375. So I could turn, now from here it says media sev 3 of 75. And it's going to show me all of what's in the media center. Media player, media on 475, FM radio, media on 575. I bet most teachers would like to eliminate the FM radio for class. If I hit the space bar, we turn it off. Off. And now we keep going. Daisy player, media on 675. So, and I can just keep doing this, go, going through all 75 different options, and I can choose what items I do and do not want to have available. After you have finished choosing, all you do is press enter and it will save your options. Setting complete. The system needs to be restarted to apply the new options. So at this Ask point, a. I would reset the Braille Sense with the little reset button in the back and the only thing that I changed was the FM radio and it would eliminate it. Now there is a way to password protect this uh, and we do not have it documented because we really don't want students to have access to it so that they don't go around password protecting each other's Braille Senses and just making their friends' lives difficult. But if you will send us an email to webinars at hymns-inc.com, we will be more than happy to send you the information on how to password protect the items once you've locked them out. This is also really good for standardized testing. One of the things that you can lock out are things like the spell check, so that uh, you, you may just want the student to be able to get into a word processing document not be able to get to the web to look up answers, not be able to get to email so they can't email their friends. Not that your students would do such things, but someone might somewhere. So you, all you have to do uh, is follow the instructions that we can send you for password protecting uh, the customized settings on your Braille Sense. Now this is just scratching the surface of some of the things that are possible. There are lots of things that we have not gotten to. This is far from a, a complete uh, recitation of all the really cool things that the Braille Sense can do, but they only give me a limited amount of time. I've already gone way over that amount of time, so I'm going to be quiet now and I will take questions. I'm going to just voice them out loud so that everyone can hear. Our next question, Dave, is from Amy, and she wants to know, why can't math worksheets given in the non-calculator mode not use math symbols? Let me make sure that I understand the question. <laughs> um, if you do a math worksheet and if you are writing it in Word and if you use the math symbols section of Word and if you save that file as an RTF or a rich text format, the BrailleSense U2 should open it and show the results in Nimeth correctly. If that is not happening, there are a couple of possibilities. Uh, we want to make sure that you're running version 8.2 of, of our firmware. We want to make sure that you're using a BrailleSense U2 uh, instead of a BrailleSense Plus. And if both of those are the case, then we'll have to, we need to dig a bit deeper to find out why it's not working the way that it should be. But if you want to use Microsoft Word and the math symbols that are within Word, and if you save it as an RTF, a rich text formatted file, it should open in Nimeth correctly. On, on the Braille Sense. The student can also respond in Nimeth 
uh, the, the Braille sense, it's uh, worth noting, was the first note taker to support Nimeth in the calculator, and then we also added Nimeth features to our word processor. Uh, I guess it was beginning, mid year last year, beginning of last year, somewhere in there. And that it goes all the way up to being able to print. If you take our documents that are created, unlike other devices, you can move our Nimeth documents over to another device like a computer and it prints out like normal math. Okay, uh, so it says the, uh, the fifth graders were not so excited about Excel, but it looks like the high schoolers were. So feedback there for you. <laughs> I, I, I can see that. And then we have several Wi-Fi questions. Um, there was a little bit of a dialogue going on, so I'll try to summarize for you, Dave. Um, Karen said that she is having a difficult time connecting to Wi-Fi because of the wrong network card. How do we connect if the Braille Sense can't find the network in school? The tech person has updated all the Wi-Fi in the school, but says that there's something wrong with the network card. There are a couple of answers to this. It will be much easier probably if we discuss some Wi-Fi issues offline when you're actually when you're at your school when we can look for the Wi-Fi network there's a section that's called add a network and you can physically write in at that point the name of the network the SSID the MAC address everything uh, that would be associated with that network so that if there's any type of hiding going on from the network administrators part or if there if there are parts of the network that aren't visible you can tell the braille sense what to look for and it still doesn't have to be visible we've been able to get wi-fi working a lot of times in schools when the the tech guys who and this is not meant to be derogatory towards the tech guys but they simply really don't know the equipment here and they don't understand what the possibilities are uh, and so we've been able to work around that and say hey this will work after all we've just got to get you to think a little bit broader and if anyone has specific questions uh, about their network, you can always email support at hims-inc.com or you can email Dave at webinars at hims-inc.com. Um, and either way, we'll put you in touch with someone who can help. Um, a more direct question for you, Dave, or a more general question. Um, our district requires a login and password to connect to the Wi-Fi. Other devices have been hard to connect with this because we can't connect that way. Is connecting to the Wi-Fi possible uh, when it's password protected? So I know that's possible, Dave. Do you want to explain quickly how you do that? It should be possible. First of all, there are a couple of things. One, usually when Wi-Fi networks are password protected, the IT guys usually have a way around it. Uh, there's usually a back door, a way that you can go in. There's a hidden network somewhere that they can put you in touch with if for, for chance this doesn't work. Uh, if you're an IT guy listening, sorry about that, but it's true. Uh, second of all, if they have password protection, if what you mean by password protection is something like an enterprise network where you're going out to a website and then entering the password, you would connect to the Wi-Fi network and then go into our web browser. You would load the web page that would automatically come up, which is probably the school's login page and then you would jump to the first form element the hotkey for that is space dots one three four five six you can think of it as sort of a half of a box and it would take you probably to the username dialog box you would type in a username jump to the next form element again with space one three four five six and go to password and press enter that will work about 98 percent of the time uh, if you have if, if they've done something really squirrely with the network and it's not working, give us a call. Uh, but I've got lots of folks that are logging on to networks. Actually, I log on, log on to networks that are password protected most of the time. When I, when I travel, that's how a lot of networks are set up in hotels. So, that, so I end up doing this quite a lot. So I can guarantee you that it works. And uh, Neil also asked if there are any plans for a wireless display that can be seen on a phone or a smart device. I think I know what you're talking about, something where you'd be actually able to use a smart device as a visual display for your Braille sense. I am assuming that's what you're talking about. We have looked at that. Here's what it comes down to. If it is, if it is vital to have something like this, we can do it. Uh, the decisions that we all have to make with as AT companies is how important is this feature to you? We can do it. It's not that hard to do. But if we do it, it delays something else being done. So I guess what, 
not to turn the question back around, but I need to know how important is this for you? And if enough people think it's vital, then I can pretty much guarantee you it'll happen. While we are waiting for those questions to come through, the next slide here has some information about our next webinar. It will be on Tuesday, February 10th. And the topic will be eBot for schools. We'll be going over tips for reducing teacher prep and accommodations frustrations. So if you'd like to register for that webinar, you can go to our website at www.kims-inc.com slash webinars. And all of our upcoming webinars will be listed there as we think them up. I'd also like to remind you that if you're going to be at a lot of the upcoming shows, whether it's ATIA or CSUN, uh, a number of the local AERs around the country, or uh, the California Tra Educators and Transcribers Conference, or a number of other conferences, be on the lookout for HIMS or our local HIMS representatives. There's a very good chance that you'll see us there. There are a few more questions that came through. And Diana wants to know, are you able to add DAISY tags to a pre-recorded file? Uh, if, if, if the file is already created, I can't go back in and add DAISY tags to it. No. That'd be pretty cool. Sally wants to know, a lot of my students' teachers want to have the Braille display connected to a monitor so that they can see what the student is typing. That's doable. If you, there's a VGA port in the back of the Braille Sense, you can plug it into any monitor. If your monitor doesn't have a VGA port, you can get an HDMI to VGA converter. Uh, in the options menu on the Braille Sense, you go to video on off and you would turn video on. Uh, the shortcut for that is, and I believe it's just you hit V. I, what I did was hit F to flip uh, the screen, and then I just hit down arrow a couple times. And I got the video display on or off, and it's just a toggle. And if that's turned on, you will see the results on a monitor. So Colleen is the one that asked that question, and she also said if there's an app to view it, that is helpful when viewing the information on the Braille Sense is just needed on the fly. Okay, so in other words, what you're saying is you would like to have an app for a mobile device? Colleen says yes. Okay. Uh, for, for any suggestions like that, because we've, we've had, that's also what Neil was talking about earlier, send me an email. What helps us out tremendously is if I have an email from you that I can send to our engineers and say, hey, look, the customers want this, it carries a lot more weight than if just Dave wants it. Jen, who I believe was watching the webinar from school, said, last period is about to start. Thank you so much for all the great info. Talk to you all Run, soon. get to your next class. Neil says, Thanks for answering the questions. The students who are on a Braille Note device, which can be displayed on a wireless device, have found it very helpful for sighted teachers uh, and note taker interactions as far as editing or help with real time work being done. And I'm taking it from this that we need to probably start working on an app that we can put onto iDevices. Keep in mind that you do have a built in screen on your Braille Sense that you can use until then. Uh, the screen can be turned on by going into your options menu with space plus O, uh, and then you go to LCD, and turn it on, and you press enter. You can also flip the text so that the text will be facing out towards the teacher and not towards the student, so that it's not as complete as a bigger screen, but it's at least a couple of lines of text. We have two more people typing in. Neil said, any idea on when the next big software update is coming? I have a really good idea, and I can't tell you. Um, there will be some exciting things happening this year, and that's, that's as far as I can go. The people who receive the first notification on all of our updates are the people who are subscribed to our email newsletter. Um, and if you go to our home page, there's a set of rotating banners there. One of them is a link to sign up for our email news group, and those are usually the first people to find out. It looks like this has been a good group. It's been interesting to have um, HIMSS product users on the line and to see what all of their questions have been. It has. This has been really interactive. Uh, Christine wants to know, does HIMSS put out a newsletter? Um, the answer to that is no. We've talked about it. We do send emails out to our list group whenever we have a big announcement to make, whenever we do a press release or we have a hardware update or a software update. And we'll email usually two or three times a month. Marilyn wrote, 
When will the Braille Sense use UEB symbols in computer Braille mode? It, it, computer Braille and UEB are two technically different codes, so I'm not sure if I have the knowledge to answer that. We support UEB now. It's one of our uh, tables that are supported. Computer Braille is a little bit different in that it was designed back in the early 80s to be one simple one you know, one, one simple one thing, so you wouldn't have things like dots two five six being a four sometimes and a period sometimes. So it's a I'm I'm, I'm not sure specifically what you're looking for there, other than we we've, we've supported UEB for some time. Pat wants to know, or she says, I read once that you could connect a USB three G modem to the Braille Sense E two QWERTY. Which one can I use? It's not available anymore, <laughs> is the short answer. It was a short-lived product that went away. I think, if I'm correct, though, that was for adding internet access on the fly, right? right? Could you use the hotspot on your iPhone or right. on your you could Android use, phone? Use the hotspot or something like that. It was, it, was a, it was a product that was being offered by Verizon that wasn't offered for very long uh, that we supported. And then it went away, and so we don't support it since it doesn't exist. Well, thank you all very much. I, I thoroughly enjoy doing these. Uh, please send your ideas. Otherwise, you get stuck with whatever we dream up. Uh, so <laughs> save yourselves and send us suggestions. But we, we look forward to doing a lot of this throughout the year. Dave, I think it's safe to close the webinar out if you want to uh, do that now, and we'll get it right All right, up. we'll do it. Well, thanks, thanks to everyone, and uh, Happy New Year, and we'll do it again soon. We'll see you at ATIA and CSUN or somewhere on the road.